we move on to the next question which is question number eight <laughs> question number eight you are given that diagram the diagram below shows apparatus used to electrolyze concentrated potassium chloride oh so it's the electrolysis of potassium chloride so you can just check on your notes pa, pa, pa. electrolysis of potassium chloride all the information that you need you have them and here we're going to answer this question giving you the necessary information that you need about electrolysis of potassium chloride so suggest a suitable material for the electrode a suitable material for the electrode when you want to electrolyze potassium chloride it is carbon then write an ionic equation to show the formation of a gas so the formation of a gas since the ionic equations is being written as in a and b so you can write both uh, half reactions which are taking place on both electrodes on the first electrode you are going to have this half reaction and the th on the second direct load you are going to have this half reaction producing that gas question number c explain why potassium metal is not formed at the cathode in this electrolysis because potassium metal in that re in this electrolysis it always remains as potassium hydroxide it remains attached to hydroxide ions and it does not form as in potassium to the electrode. Number D, write the overall equation for the electrolysis of concentrated aqueous potassium chloride. So this is the overall reaction. You've got potassium chloride. You, have, you want to split it into two. So you are going to split it into potassium and chlorine. And your overall reaction will be that. So this wraps up the section a of the chemistry and it was very simple as simple as it was now let's come to quest section b section b you've got 30 marks so you've got four questions and you are told to answer any three questions from this section so instead of answering any three we are going to answer all the questions and obtain the 40 marks so each question carries 10 marks so we start with question number nine so question number nine it has 10 marks question number nine it's about the contact process of sulfuric acid the formation of sulfuric acid yeah i'm sure so question number one there it is copper two sulfate crystals can be prepared in the laboratory by reacting copper two carbonate with dilute acid oh no it's not about the contact process Name the dilute acid which reacts with copper 2 carbonate to form copper 2 sulfate. So you've got copper 2 carbonate. Now you want to form copper 2 sulfate. How are you going to have copper 2 sulfate? So any acid that has got sulfate ions, you can use it to form copper 2 sulfate. And that acid, I've picked sulfuric acid. Second question, write a balanced chemical equation with state symbols for the reaction. So you've got copper carbonate, copper 2 carbonate, reacting with sulfuric acid. You're going to have copper 2 sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. Since the question says it has to be balanced and state symbols, the state symbols first, copper 2 carbonate, it is a solid, so you present it as a solid. Sulfuric acid is aqueous. Copper to sulfate is aqueous, carbon dioxide is a gas, and water is just a liquid. So you include those state symbols. Then you counter check if your equation is balanced. Copper atoms, you have one here. Also, to the product side, you also have one. So copper balanced. <coughs> you come to carbon atoms, you've got one here. Also, here you've got one. So carbon balanced. You come to oxygen atoms, here you've got. 3 plus 4, 7. How much do you have here? 4 plus 2, 6 plus 1, 7. So even oxygen, balanced. You come to hydrogen, 2. Also there, 2. So the whole equation is now balanced. Number 3, describe the procedure for the preparation of copper 2 sulfate solution from copper 2 carbonate and, named, and the named acid in one above. 
So we are taught to describe the procedure of this process that we've written in an equation form. So in description of this procedure, this is what we do for this equation to take place. We are going to have a measured amount of sulfuric acid, but excess amount of copper 2 carbonate. Why do we have excess amount of copper 2 carbonate? Because we want all the acid to do what? To react. We don't want to obtain a salt that would be an acid salt, no. So we want all the acid to react. So the copper 2 carbonate, the solid thing, it has to be in excess. So this is the procedure. Excess copper 2 carbonate is added in dilute sulfuric acid. After the reaction, some since copper 2 carbonate will be excess, so some unreactive copper 2 carbonate will remain. And to get rid of those, they will be filtered. Now the filtrate, which will go down, will consist of uh, copper 2 sulfate. So the filtrate, which is copper 2 sulfate, for us to obtain some pure crystals of this copper 2 sulfate, we have to saturate it first by heating it to evaporation. We saturate it. Then the solution is then cooled to crystallize. Once it is cooled to crystallize, some crystals will form. And those pure crystals of salts are obtained. So you have to know this procedure. First of all, you pour excess of your solid into your acid. Second, you filter to get rid of the unreactive solid. Third, you heat the solution to saturate it. Fourth, you crystallize to cool it, to allow crystals to form. Then third, you collect your crystals as in salt. Just by knowing these steps, these four steps, you get five marks. That's how easy it is. Let's move on to question number B. Question number B. Describe what is observed when an excess of sodium hydroxide solution is added to a solution containing copper 2 ions and name one product formed. So you have sodium hydroxide reacting with copper 2 sulfate. Just let us complete this equation and see what will give us. So it's giving us sodium sulfate and copper 2 hydroxide. So we are told to name we are told to name any product formed. So you can name any one of the two. Either sodium sulfate or copper 2 hydroxide. Now in describing the observation, we are going to see bubbles which will appear. And these bubbles, they will give us a hint that a reaction has taken place. Then the named, pro the named product, which is copper 2 hydroxide, is one of the product formed but if you want you can even give sodium sulfate question number c describe a chemical test to show the presence of sulfate ions in the solution and state what will be observed sulfate ions in the solution so the test for sulfate ions in the solution you just have to add barium chloride once you add barium chloride in anything which contains sulfate ions, you are going to see a white precipitate of barium sulfate formed. So white precipitate, precipitate is nothing but a solid. So if a solution contains uh, sulfate ions, once you add barium chloride, you, want, you have to see some white solids. Those white solids, we call them white precipitate and their name is barium sulfate. So once this has been formed, then you are going to know that, okay, in this solution, there are actually sulfate ions. That's the test for sulfate ions. That was it for question number nine, and you can get your 10 marks just by that.